Hey guys, this is Brandon with Motionform 3D Plus. So a lot of people are asking what is the best 3D printer and where the best place to go to find a printer except for Google. However, when you look at Google, there's a thing that you need to really be thinking about, um, of course. Um, right now I'm looking at several different varieties and a bunch of price ranges. However, the thing that people really should be looking at is the type of printer's prints that they'll be making. Um, because af after a while, you you'll see that obviously you can buy a very expensive print, but you know what do you really need it for? So with me, I went ahead and went with Prusa, and I'm not getting paid or anything for this, but I'll tell you why I went with Prusa. Um, I have I have this MKS three. I'll just click on that. You'll see that um, Prusa is <clears throat> top of the search engine, not just because of its, um, you know, like maybe their SEO, but also because of their um, just quality of things that you can make with it, their brand reputation, they're making, you know, a lot of things available for people uh, that use it. And so um, even if, you know, you just go to the website, oh, you know, what what, what is this? You know, I will definitely um, click on here. Uh, I'll definitely note that there's a time that it takes to get to your location. It takes about actually, it took me almost like a month to receive it. Uh, I got it put together because I had placed or printed, you know, pretty much, pretty much, put together my own printer once, and there was an issue with it. I had to get a replacement, and <laughs> you know, after building something yourself, it's like, why am I? going to all this extra effort so you actually can build your own prusa uh, and get a uh, you know make it yourself kit for like three hundred dollars less but the idea is if you can afford to have it built for you it's fine okay so it comes with everything okay so i just want to show you that one first but obviously if we go over to amazon you know you'll actually see that amazon has another set of 3d printers and Amazon, of course, will show you like the cheapest ones that you can buy. And I'll tell you something about these. Make sure you're noticing when it says do DIY or do it yourself because that means there's things that could be wrong with the alignment or, you know, there's certain ways that it could be placed together wrong. So don't just get lured in. Also, uh, this is where you like, you really need to be learning. There's a difference between an FDM uh, printer, which is like pretty much layer upon layer versus uh now there's a lot of sl printers out there which sort of extrudes up and heats like a liquid the idea is that you are going to consider you know what sort of print you want in the end because obviously uh, if it's layer by layer you'll either have to get a support material if you're having like a more funky shape um and the idea is if you're shooting it up maybe you know it costs a lot more like even so they have like a SL printer and that's going to be costing more for a smaller size. That's that's the important thing. Like look at these sizes. Don't don't ever buy a printer without knowing what is the scale for it. Even the one I bought that was cheaper, I had like a 30 by 30 centimeter bed. But the thing is like look at what the downside is. Like it it broke a lot. It had a lot of issues with it. And now my Prusa which almost gave me no issues. You know, it has like a 25 by 25, but it, you know, it does the work for me, right? And so also, uh, if you see my Prusa versus the Flash Forge, I don't have an enclosure. So that, that Flash Forge is going to be a lot smaller, but it has an enclosure, which, you know, is nice because essentially you have to you know, be mindful not to put your printer on our AC or have it exposed to temperature because that might affect how the print comes out. So... There are certain, you know, things that you need to be concerned about. If you print with, um, you know, PLC, PLA, it's like the most common print material. You see that the orange and black material. That's going to be, uh, you know, pretty much safe. But there's other materials that are harder that have like an odor and chemical odor that you would want to enclose it for. So that's another note for your printer. Um, okay, we're not going to really look at the super high expensive one. With the cheaper printer also, um, like smaller printer, maybe you just need to make a really small thing. Um, so, I mean, that's always an option just to quickly have something. 
listen, you're always going to have some level of maintenance that's needed on a printer. So don't think that because you pay a certain price or something or it's enclosed, you won't ever have to go inside. Uh, printers break some time or there may be a piece that needs to be moved. So I think it's a good learning cost to be understanding how to put together and work on a printer. So while the Prusa or printer like this Creelty might like do it yourself, even that little box for the Flash Forge might need to have some work on it. Um, and also, you know, I, I'm not going to ignore the fact that there are 3D printing pins. And maybe if you just want to do like some more crafty stuff, that actually might serve your purpose. Um, essentially, like if you can afford, uh, so this is what is called a prosumer range. You definitely want to get the top of the prosumer range because that's the 100 to 1,000 range or 100 to 1,200. MakerBot starts to go into a higher range and that also might come with higher um, types of materials that can be printed with it. So when you get out of this range, there are other considerations. Uh, I really definitely would focus on people who are just really starting. Um, if you're really going to do that like, professionally, I just, I think Proust is a great like starter top for the prosumer. When you start doing too very much uh, like commercial printing, Something like a MakerBot was something that I was recommending to my firm. So you start thinking about a lot more things and um, maybe even the SL printer uh, when you start thinking about that higher range. So anyway, um, I I didn't really break down like sort of the categories, but I'll, I'll do it really quickly here. You want to think about uh, what type of prints it can be made, if you will be putting it together, the size that it can make, including the height. Uh, those are some things that you will put into your considerations in addition to the maintenance required for like, you know, the do-it-yourself printer might require you to fix it a lot more. Those are things to consider when getting a 3D printer and choosing one. I would say make a list, make a table, and then find the one that, you know, checks the most of your boxes. Um, and uh, again, like I've I give you my experience and uh, ask any questions if you have. Again, this is Brandon Motion Forum. See you in the next episode.